turtle lived in the jungles of an area we now call Prince Guiana. Turtle had many friends. Most of his friends, though, were birds. One day, Turtle was out in his front yard, and uh, a bunch of his bird friends came over to visit. And while they were there talking very excitedly, another bird flew down amongst the middle of them and was obviously happy about something. Well, what are you so happy about, Turtle asked. My cousin is giving a party, and we're all invited. It's going to be a wonderful party. He's going to have every kind of birthday food you could imagine, cakes and cookies galore. Well, Turtle, who was never one to pass up a party, <clears throat> cleared his throat and happened to ask, uh, would I be invited? Why, of course, Bird said. You're our friend. You're invited. Well, where is this party, Turtle asked. Right up there. And the bird pointed way up to the top of the cliff that was right behind Turtle's house. Very, very high up there. Turtle became very sad. Why are you so sad, Bird asked. Why, your cousin's party is way up there and I'm down here. And everybody knows, of course, turtles can't fly. And we can't jump very high. We, we put our little legs down and pop it. We don't go very high, and I certainly can't climb a cliff that tall. I won't be able to go to your party. Birds began to feel a little sorry for turtle because they knew how much he enjoyed a party. And they formulated a plan. And all the birds got together, and each one of them would pick their finest, largest feather and pull it out. And they took it over and they set it down by Turtle. And pretty soon there was a big pile of feathers there next to Turtle. And the birds began to take the feathers and stick them between Turtle's toes to where all the feathers stuck out from his feet. And one of the birds said, Turtle, perhaps you can go with us. Try to fly. And Turtle began to move his legs a little faster and a little faster and a little faster. So pretty soon took off and he started flying around and turtle and the birds took off whew, heading to the top of the cliff to go to the party on the way up turtle had an idea my friends he said you know to this point none of us have names oh yes I'm turtle and you're a bird but we don't have names like people do wouldn't it be Wonderful if when we got to your cousin's party, if we all had names. Well, the birds thought this was a good idea. So, they began to pick names. The blackbird picked the name George. Another bird thought Henry sounded like a nice refined name. And, and Susie and Mary and Timmy and on and on until all the birds had picked names. They all had a name, except for Turtle. Why, Turtle, aren't you going to pick a name? Turtle thought a moment and said, Yes, my name will be All of You. Hmm, All of You. Now, that seemed like a rather strange name, but after all, Turtle picked it. He'd have to live with it. They flew and flew till finally they reached the top of the cliff. And when they landed up there, we're... There was a huge table, just as had been described, full of food, laden from one end to the other. And a large crow stepped forward out of the group of birds that were there to welcome the new arrivals. And the birds that had come stepped forward one at a time and introduced themselves by their new names. Finally, they had all introduced themselves, and then Turtle stepped forward. <clears throat> My friend, he asked, uh, I see this table full of food. Could you tell me who is this food for? Well, all of you, of course. Turtle looked to one side and then looked to the other side. You heard him. You heard what he said. He said the food was for all of you. Now, 
What did I say that my name would be? And the birds had to admit he had said his name would be all of you. Well, Turtle just pushed his way through the crowd, got up on that table and worked his way from one end down to the other, eating everything in sight till there wasn't even a crumb left. Well, as he moved down that line of food, the birds began to get angry. One by one, they flew up and they took that feather that they'd given Turtle and they flew off. They did it one at a time. A turtle was so busy making a pig out of himself that he didn't even notice. When he got to the end of the table, he looked down and realized he no longer had any feathers. And all of the birds were gone, except for one who sat up on a tree limb above his head. Turtle began to cry as he realized that he was now stuck on the top of this cliff with no way to get down. What's your problem? The bird asked. I'm stuck on this cliff and I have no way of getting down. Would you please help me? Well, <clears throat> I don't know that I should help you. You were invited to this party as a guest and you made a pig out of yourself. And you ate everything and left none for us. But Turtle cried so hard and so long that finally the bird gave in. What would you like me to do? Turtle thought a moment and he said, fly down to the bottom of the cliff to my home. Tell my wife to go into the house and bring out all of the soft things and pile them at the bottom of the cliff. And then I can jump off the cliff and when I land on them, I will be safe and sound home again. Well, I shouldn't do it, said Bird. But he flew on off. And he flew down to the bottom of the cliff and he knocked on the door of Mrs. Turtle. And she came to the door. May I help you? Yes, you will find this a rather strange request, Mrs. Turtle, but your husband has asked me to give you a message. He said for you to gather up all of the hard things in the house and bring them out and stack them at the bottom of the cliff. Well, being an obedient wife, she did exactly as was requested. She gathered all of the hard things out of the house and piled them at the bottom of the cliff. Turtle, who was way up on top of the cliff looking down, could only see a pile. He couldn't tell what was in it. So he got back and he started to run, well, as fast as a turtle can run. And he ran and he jumped off of the cliff and he began to sail and sail and he thought this was as much fun as flying and then he flipped over on his back and he started falling and just about the time that he turned over he landed boom onto that pile and his shell burst into a hundred pieces and went in every direction turtle got up and kind of staggered around all of the birds were in the trees laughing and turtle realized he no longer had a shell he began to cry and wail terribly. Oh, what am I to do now? No turtle can be without a shell. I'll never be able to come out of my home again. And he cried and he cried. The birds felt so sorry for him that they once again got together and one by one they flew off and they worked together until they found every single solitary piece of turtle shell. And they took some glue and they put the shell all back together again. Then they took it and gave it to Turtle and Turtle looked at it and he thought, well, this is not as good as a new shell, but it's better than nothing. And he slipped it on. When you see a turtle, you don't see a shell that's smooth and clean. You see a shell that looks like it's been broken into many pieces and then put back together.